What I noticed is that there is no website for NFT. Bitcoin has a website, Ethereum has a website, but then I thought, why does NFT doesn't have one? And if you don't know, NFTs are non-fungible tokens. And that allows you to assign ownership to digital assets, like digital collectibles or digital art. I am not going to go into crazy details, but just to know that an NFT, it's not a cryptocurrency and that it's in a different category. Just know that it's built on the blockchain. But anyways, if you want to read about NFTs, go ahead doing your research. I'm not here to explain what an NFT is. I'm here to do something else. NFT doesn't have a website, but if they would, how would it look like? So I decided to make a website for NFT, like not for an NFT, like just for the broad sense of the term, like for example, Bitcoin, NFT. I decided to make a website for that. So then I got my imagination working in figuring out how would it look like. So this is my shot at this. And I want to make the creation process a little bit more challenging for myself. So I'm gonna give myself two hours. And the whole website process is going to be my usual process, which is building the design in Figma and then transitioning to Webflow where I can do the development. So this is my approach on an NFT website in two hours. Okay, so first things first, I needed to find appropriate colors. And for that, what I usually do, I go on colors.co and I try to find nice color combinations. And I imagine this gold colored website for an NFT, you know, for example, like in average, they're being sold for like $2,000, $3,000. And the most expensive art piece I know was sold uh, was a neon cat for $600,000. Yeah, they're expensive. So for me, it needed to represent expensive. So I was looking for yellow colors for, you know, to represent gold. And I just played around with the color picker and I found this yellow, which I really love. Then what I did is I put that color in colors.co and I just, you know, locked it. And I just clicked enter to see different variations that colors.co would give me for like 10 minutes. Then I finally had the color that popped up and it was like a very blue, dark, color that I really liked and I think it would be a very nice accent color for um, the whole website. So and then I thought I was losing way too much time because we have to remember I have two hours and I was losing way too much time on figure like just finding colors. Then I said, you know what, I'm gonna make a website design that is in white, this beautiful yellow color and this very dark blue. Now that I had my colors, I went to Figma and I started to create the grid. And this grid is basically going to allow me to align elements on the canvas. And once I started to create buttons and pretty much the layout itself, then I had to go search for a font because I cannot use a basic font for that. I needed a font that represented the digital world. So then I went on Google and I searched for digital fonts, fonts that have a futuristic look. And for about 10 minutes, I was just searching random fonts, just hoping to find something that was aligning with my vision for this website. And then after a few minutes of browsing, I found this beautiful font named Akira. And that font was perfect. Now, quick note, as a best practice, when you choose fonts for web design, try to not choose fonts that have one type, meaning don't try to find fonts that have one regular style. If the font doesn't have a bold, a semi-bold, a thin, uh, italic, then don't use that font. Reason why it's because you need variety in your website. By having one font style, it might penalize you in the future. However, in this case, it's okay because I know that I'm gonna use that font specifically only for titles. And considering that, I also needed to find another font that I'm gonna use for paragraphs. So then I did the same process. I just went on Google Fonts and I tried to find a font that would color Correlate, correlate. And I managed to find that font, which is Manro or Manropi, whatever you want to call it. So then the hero background, I didn't want to put an image. I wanted to be, try to be minimalistic. And I tried to play with this faded out circles that I wanted to create a background behind. And I wanted it to pretty much be type of lights that would be kind of blurred in the back. Uh, hard to describe, but I hope you know what I was going with this and it didn't work. It was just 
not the identity I was looking for. So I scrapped that idea and then I tried to use a grid because grids, I feel like they have something digital assigned with them. I didn't want it to be a regular grid you see on many websites. I just wanted a grid that had something different. And after some iterations, that's where I came out with this grid, which had very pale yellow squares. So now this is the coolest part of the whole challenge. I love 3D elements. So I was like, in those two hours I have, I'm going to make a 3D model. I was not going to model it because I didn't have time for that. However, I went on Sketch, Sketchfab, Sketchfab it is. So that's where I went and I tried to find a model of an NFT coin. However, they didn't have any. So what I did, I took an Ethereum coin. The reason why Ethereum is because NFT is built on the blockchain of Ethereum. So then I took the model and I imported it into Adobe Dimension. And that's a program that makes rendering easy. Look, you don't need to go to Cinema 4D or 3ds Max and arrange lights and play with the settings of V-Ray or whatever. Adobe Dimension is literally made just for rendering. So if you already have 3D assets, you just import it into Adobe Dimension and there's already an environment set up for you to render anything. So that's what I did to save time. I tried to render that coin. However, that coin was very hard to render because the way it was done, the lighting didn't refract according to my plan. It was kind of very hard to direct on the element. So what I did, I found another 3D model of Ethereum. However, it wasn't a coin, it was just the logo of Ethereum. And I tried to play with that. As I said, I really wanted a gold finish, a gold material. So I played with the lighting a little bit and after about 20 minutes, I managed to render this. So once I had a 3D model, I basically made an image of it, a PNG, and I've just put it in my hero section. I mean, at this point already, the hero section was looking good and I liked the result. And let's remember that a website is not just made to be pretty. It needs to have a structure. It needs to lead the user somewhere. So what we needed to do is to make sure that when they land and they see this beautiful hero section, they scroll and they learn more about what's an NFT. So I made the next section and I literally called it how it works. And now the challenge was how I would like to lay out this information on this grid. So after about 30 minutes, I managed to lay out this information in an acceptable way. Of course, if I would have more time, more than two hours, I would probably do something better, but I was still happy with the result. And then I've added the NFT logo to the website, which was pretty simple to do. I just found it online and I just, you know, made it black. And then in this section, I wanted to show a testimonial because there is nothing better than a testimonial to show social proof. However, the problem is that an NFT, it doesn't have testimonials. So the thing is, I just invented one, but usually you don't invent testimonials. You know, you take real ones. That's just for the sake of this design. And then there was one more thing to add, and it was basically the marketplaces that utilize NFTs. And once that was done, I was pretty much ready to go to the development stage in Webflow. And I started to create classes for a few items. I mean, if you use Webflow, you better use classes. I mean, if you don't use classes, then why are you using Webflow? And classes are pretty much what makes Webflow the best. They allow you to, you know, not waste time and just build websites way faster because you make you can make styling for many different items. And when you need to make a change, you don't need to go and change every single item by itself. You can just change one item and all the items will change because they have the same class. And for the hero section, I decided to use a grid. Lately, I find grids very useful, especially when you know how they work. And for the 3D model and the background, which is the, the grid background, I basically just reuse the image from Figma. Instead of making my own like squares and try to recreate the grid uh, completely from scratch in Webflow, I decided to use just an image of the grid. I just think that that way of doing it saved me time and made the process easier. And once I had my 3D model on the website, which is basically a PNG, it just the render looks so sleek, it just looks like a 3D model. And to show that it was kind of a 3D model, I made it hover. And I really like that effect. That interaction is actually very nice. Now that the hero section was completed, I needed to go and create the how it works section. 
Now let me tell you, that section is harder than I thought. The reason why is because just placing an image of a grid would be hard because when you would go to the tablet version, to the mobile version, it's an image. So it's not gonna conserve the same size of tiles of your squares. So what I did in this case is that I actually redid the grid from scratch. I basically made the grid with those little squares. That's, that's the result that it gave me. The benefits of doing the grid this way was basically that they were scalable. I was able to decide how many tiles I would like to have on the mobile or tablet or laptop on any size of screen. If I would use an image, however, all the tiles would basically stretch and there would not be squares anymore. Another tricky part here is that it was pretty hard to lay out those paragraphs. In Webflow, there's no snapping feature like we had in Figma, where you could just snap the text to any tile. Here, we cannot do that. So what I did, I just made a grid of four uh, rectangles that I filled up with the paragraphs. And then the challenge was to, f to make those kind of pointers, which was pretty hard. And I quickly understood that if I would dedicate more time, recreate those lines, it would probably take me about 30 minutes to figure out how to do it. However, I only had 20 minutes left to finish the Webflow design. So what I did, I just ignored them. However, a good alternative would be to put little arrows, golden arrows, which I think would look good. I think it would be a nice alternative and an easy fix. Um, I mean, if you have time restraints, but usually when you don't have time restraints, I would suggest to put all of your effort to, you know, replicate the Figma design. But in this case, because we have time constraints, so we can ignore it. So then the how it works section was pretty much done. Then I had to do the testimonial section. I just took this background from Figma and I placed it on Webflow. It was pretty straightforward. It was pretty much some copy pasting. And then also a very easy section, the last section, the NFT marketplaces. I also used the grid and this section was also very straightforward, um, pretty simple. And then our website was completed and in only one hour and 49 minutes. And with that, we're done and the website is published. But would be cool though if I would own the nft.com domain. But anyways, so that was my take on the NFT website. If you're also a website developer, then give it a shot if you want to. And if you have any questions about my web design process or about some stuff that I maybe didn't cover in this video, then go to the comment section and feel free to ask whatever. And I actually love this challenge. It makes you practice all of your skills and, you know, makes you better. If you have any ideas of what I should do next in my next web design challenge, then then again, leave it in the comment section. So, so tell me what you think about the website I've just did and I guess I'll see you in the next one.